Yo, what's up guys? It's Todd from Zeotag and today we talk with world-renowned video thought leader George B. Thomas about how to plan out a great video strategy for your business, how to make videos engaging, how to shoot those videos and produce something that's worth watching, and a few other tips to make your video game go to the next level. So, without further ado, here's my conversation with George. All right, so thank you very much for joining us, George. Why don't you just give a quick little intro on your name, your company, and, and how you got into video? Yeah, definitely. So thanks, first of all, Todd, for having me on the show. I'm super excited to add value to your community. Uh, I come from Impulse Creative. We're an inbound marketing agency out of Fort Myers, Florida. I also come from a startup inside of that uh, agency like called that. Sprocket Talk. Yeah, SprocketTalk.com, where we focus on HubSpot education for the masses, agencies, mm -hmm. and just typical users of the software. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got into video because of actually educating myself on this thing that is HubSpot inbound marketing and wanting to educate and teach people how to do the things that they couldn't figure out how to do in the software. And now it's gone from being this guy who's known for HubSpot to being known for this guy who does video uh, because I've literally gone through the trenches, right? Self-taught uh, thousands of hours of YouTube videos and lynda.com videos and just my feet in the ground, yeah. on the ground, you know, in the keyboard and the tools and trying to figure it out. And so now I speak all over the country about how to use video and sales, marketing and service, hence why we're having this conversation today. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. And, you know, um, both being part of the inbound community uh, for a long time, you know, I know we both have the same philosophy on like what that messaging and the marketing is. But, you know, for the people um, out there watching, like how do you really define video marketing and, and, and how do you approach a video strategy in today's modern world? Yeah, Todd, it's funny because the first thing I do is I get people to back up off of like even thinking of it as marketing or just sales. I, I want them to think of it as uh, sales, marketing, and service, mm -hmm. first of all. Second thing I want them to really not think of it as a tactic or a strategy uh, because really what we're doing is communicating. So when you frame the conversation as video is a way to communicate, no matter if you're in sales, marketing, or service, now you can start to break some of the hurdles down that might stop you from actually starting or continuing on with this thing that is video. So I really want everybody, first of all, to know that video is the best way to communicate other than face to face. So like if I can't drive to your house, if I if you can't come to my store, then video should be your go to way to communicate no matter where they are in your sales funnel. Uh, and again, sales, marketing or service, all three of those across the board should be leveraging video in some way, shape or form to communicate with customers who have problems and need their products, services or processes to get past those problems. That's yeah. it. I, I love that you talk about that and you know everyone's talking about video as a strategy or a tactic these days and you have to have video and 87% of website traffic is going to be video blah, 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 all this other stuff right but to me what I'm starting to see companies who are uh, you know they're heeding that advice but what they're doing is they're taking an old school commercial mm -hmm. and to them that's video they're thinking you know companies are thinking of video and video marketing video for my business and they're thinking about a commercial that they see on TV and they're putting commercials on to their Facebook or YouTube or whatever. And so can you talk a little bit about that and like that mentality versus what kind of videos should people plan on creating? Yeah, and it's funny that you mentioned this because it's another passion point of mine where when when people think about doing video for their company, especially in the marketing realm and even in the sales realm, they always want to think that it has to be polished and perfect. Like mm -hmm. that's where their mind goes to, right? That commercial yep. type content. And here's the thing, what I want them to lean into is unperfect, right? Imperfect yeah. content. Yeah. But, but what I mean by that, because I don't want you to make junk. Like I'm not literally <laughs> on this video telling you, hey, just make, just make crappy content. Yeah. No, I'm not saying that. When I say imperfect uh, or, you know, or not polished, uh, what I'm talking about is I want you to create authentic content. I literally want them to be able to see you as a human being and how you feel, how you breathe, how you communicate, who you are. Um, because especially when it comes into the sales and the marketing side of using video, it, it is about liking, knowing, and trusting the person Absolutely. that we're actually getting the content from. Yeah. And so if you're perfect and polished, most consumers, Todd, are going to be like, hmm, 
BS, beep, 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 yep. right? BS meter is going to go off. Yep. But if they see like you kind of flub up a couple words or, you know, you say something a little bit different, then they're like, oh, well, this is normal. Like this is how George communicates. He uses his hands. I can see his right. facial expressions. Yeah. I start to like, know, and trust Todd and George because they're spending – what is digital face-to-face -face time with yeah. us, right? Yeah. And so I want everybody to realize that right now, especially leaning into that imperfect and that authentic style content is really where the game is being won right now. Yeah, and you know, I don't have um, the exact specific numbers offhand right now, but in my agency, we ran uh, a few tests in the earlier this, earlier this year, and we did Facebook ads, and we had a cell phone video, speaking a certain message, right? Versus and it like shot the video with a professional camera, sent into an editor who put like a bunch of graphics and stuff like that. And yeah. the cell phone video with the same message to the same audience, that ad got five times as many clicks through and five times as many leads as the one that was highly edited. And the reason is people are trained to ignore commercials, right? So when they're scrolling through Facebook, internet, you know, YouTube, Instagram, whatever, if they see something that's a polished looking commercial, their brain is telling them they're trying to sell you something, skip through it. But when they see something that's authentic, it creates yep. a connection, right? And that's also like, I like to look at like branding and brand awareness. I like practical branding and it's putting a message out that resonates and by putting out like these kind of authentic videos, these imperfect videos, it creates more of a relationship with your audience and that's what you want because like you said, you want people to know, like, and trust you. And we did the same yes. thing with, with uh, a webinar, video sales letter, whatever you want to call it, where we had same presentation with a, like exactly what we're doing now is a webcam with a corner video and a presentation that we clicked through versus on stage speaking at a professional event with a you know twenty thousand dollar camera crew editing all that kind of stuff, and the highly produced uh, stage presentation got zero sales. And over that same period of time, I think we got like a handful, five, six, something like that sales from the webcam presentation. And we're talking high ticket, you know, five, ten thousand dollar projects. So, you know, yeah. people just they they resonate more and they connect more and they pay attention more with authenticity, right? And I think that's really what it's all about. And and people have just been trained our whole lives to to push off advertising. So Yeah, without I mean, a doubt. Todd, if I can unpack just a couple of things there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because if you think about what you just said, um, really it's like how we all ignore the right or left-hand side sidebars <laughs> of a website, right? Yep. Um, that's the same mentality that we have towards that commercial, that that multi, you know, just mm -hmm. everybody's in it, producing it. It's yep. just perfect. And what I want to kind of unpack in there too is you use the term professional camera. Yeah. And, and there's this mentality that a webcam can't be a professional camera. Right. There's this mentality that a smartphone can't be a professional yeah. camera. I don't know how many people watching this has seen the actual iPhone 11 Pro Max commercials yet. That's a freaking pro camera <laughs> in a cell phone, right? Yep. And, and here's the thing, we're doing this video right now and I'm using a webcam for my camera. It's a Brio 4K, anything that shoots at 4K is a professional yep. camera. Yep. So again, it comes down to breaking down these hurdles and these mindsets. So don't think about uh, it as a camera or a professional camera. Think of it as a device to be able to communicate with humans on the other side of that camera. And yep. even don't even think about it as a camera or a device, but think of it as a conduit and think yep. of the people on the other side when you're creating these videos. That will help you be more authentic. So yeah. it's it's, again, one of the things that is my big passion point, Todd, is that you can create more video in less time with less money mm -hmm. if you can reframe your mindset and er eradicate all these hurdles that people put around video. Yeah, totally. And look, we're living it right now, the imperfect, like, I talked to you last week. We just launched the company, and I know we need to put content out. So I got my light on. I don't even have a background yet, right? I got a plain back, plain plain background. Nothing's going on, but you know, I have my my Logitech webcam, a, a simple ring light, and a microphone all together. Probably cost me less than two hundred and fifty bucks. And we're just running, and we're putting out great content that hopefully people get value from. And that's how we're looking to build connections with the audience. That's it. And I love what you're talking about with hurdles, because when when I first started getting into the blogging world and all that when you know HubSpot first came out and all inbound uh, you know, several years ago. 
I had clients who, same thing. I'm not a blogger. I'm not going to write articles. I'm not going to do this, blah, blah, blah. So I said, okay, no problem. But what I did was I took this, I, I devised the content strategy and I had specific topics that we want to talk about. And rather than saying, hey, can you write me an article? Write me 800 words on this topic. What I did was I shot him an email and was like, hey, you know, I was having breakfast this morning with a friend who was asking me about this. And I said that I'm working with you. So I was wondering, you know, can, can, you, uh, mm. can you expand on this topic? What do they do? They emailed me back that day probably took them 15 minutes with 600 words that I took copy and paste it, put it into a blog post. Yeah. I formatted it and whatever, but like sure. for them, it's no brainer. They're mental hurdles around creating the content. So when you can start looking at it as discussions that you're having and just communicating, yep. it makes it so much easier, but flipping on the camera with no game plan is going to leave mm. you with a lot to desire. So talk to me about how you plan out video strategies and some tips that people can take away. Yeah, definitely. So I kind of get to cheat because there's a lot of people that ask me a lot of questions. Um, and so I can kind of surface what are the most questions that I'm getting and let me create a piece of content around that. I also get to cheat because I pay attention to a software called HubSpot and HubSpot is always updating that software. And so the community needs to know about those updates. Um, I also cheat a little bit because Google will literally tell me what people are searching for. Yep. And now what I want everybody to realize is there are three things things that I just mentioned there, paying attention to your customer or the person that you're trying to serve or the community that you're trying to serve, paying attention to Google and how people are interacting with Google and what topics surface up, right? So there's just two main places that people yeah. could start with right there. Yeah. Um, and you know what, just start with those two places. I mean, and, and that's the big piece I want to see is just start. But but when you're getting ready to do video, you do want to have the basics covered, right? So you listed it off real quick, a basic camera, basic lighting, uh, basic mic, um, and making sure that there's stability, maybe yeah. some type of background if you want to have it be creative, right? Those are your basics, mm -hmm. having those in place, and preferably taught if it's a place that can be set up so that you can, again, in less time, don't have to tear down and put it back up and put it back away. Yeah. Like if it can be set up and you can just, like when we started this interview, I'm like, hey, let me go over to my <laughs> area. Boom, I hooked in my computer, we were yeah. walking rolling if yep. you can have that that's amazing after that it's understanding well should these be interview style um mm -hmm. should they be looking at the camera or should the camera just be at a way where it's kind of side facing because it can be more of that conversation mm -hmm. um what are the things that we actually need on our website do we have a video on our home page do we have a video on our service pages or our product pages heck have we been in inbound this entire time and blogging and not have video teasers on our actual blog articles because yeah. that's the places where I would initially start is here's the thing. You got all this blog content. Those, those blogs can become scripts for yeah. video or, or pieces of it out of it for a script for a video. And now you can create a teaser to go on there and not just because it'll entice the people to read the article, which it'll do, but because now they'll plus, press the play button. Why? Because most of us are lazy and we'd rather <laughs> press a play button instead of read an article. And yeah. now here's the fun thing. We're going to get hashtag nerdy for a second. <laughs> they're going to hit that play button and they're going to be on that page for a minute and a half or two minutes or however long your teaser video is. And now Google says, oh my gosh, the bounce rate is dramatically going down this page is adding more value let me raise it in the search results holy macro <laughs> so that's another place where I would start using video in your inbound marketing strategy yeah yeah absolutely so now people are watching right you talked about that time on site and um, you know part of what our tool does and I'm happy to integrate this into the conversation because one you can sign up free zotag.com and two it does exactly what you're talking about, right? Like we'll take any online video. So you put put a video, a three minute teaser, or even take, read off your whole blog, your, your whole blog piece in a five minute video, put it on YouTube, take the link and put it through our player. And what's gonna happen is people are lazy. Mm -hmm. I personally like to skim through an article versus skimming through a video because how do you skim through a video, right? So how do you keep those people engaged for a full thing? I can tell real quick to the audience, the Zeotag player, what it does is it will create an automatic table of content. So you can see this is a seven minute video. Here's all the topics. I want to jump right to the 230 mark and hear them talk about the, the camera they're talking about, right? That's one way I see that we can in keep people engaged and staying on the page longer to get them to the content they want to watch quicker. But give us some other tips for creating creating engaging videos and get people to watch and pay attention. 
Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, if you want people to pay attention, if you want them, them to engage, it's not so much about the length of the video, but it's the content inside of the video. And what I mean by that is if you're addressing somebody's problems or, uh, or going towards somebody's desire or want or goal, they're more likely to pay attention. Also, formatting it in a way that it actually keeps their attention. So it's mm -hmm. funny, you talk about scrolling through or scrubbing through a video. Yep. Oh, here's the thing. If you, uh, when you're watching TV tonight, and and this blew my mind, by the way, I learned about this a couple of years ago. If if you're watching TV tonight and you're watching a TV show, I want you to start counting one, two, three. Four. And I bet your bottom dollar there's going to be a camera shift. It's going to be a different angle. One, two, three. Something's going to fly in on the screen or the angle's going to change. And so what we can't do is just get in front of a camera and do kind of what we're doing right now, but it's an interview, so it makes sense, is yeah. this long, extended piece of content, right? Yeah. If you're creating content, it's how can I splice this up? How can I chop it up so that I'm getting a different camera angle or something's coming in or there's something grabbing their attention? Because we do have that squirrel mentality where we're <laughs> like, you know, like, oh, let me go do this other thing. But if you're keeping a squirrel entertained because you're being uh, just com just boom, boom, boom on the way that you're editing these videos and making their mind like, oh, I got to pay attention because he's moving and there's things flying in, then they're going to engage longer. The other piece of this, though, too, is hopefully you have a way that you're even measuring how long they are watching these videos. So there are some platforms out there that you can see what's the video retention. YouTube, Wistia, all sorts of tools. Mm -hmm. What's the retention of this video and where are they skipping? Because on a marketing side and especially on a sales side, heck, even on service side, if I send somebody a video and they only watch half of it, I'm gonna have a completely different conversation with them uh, other than they have watched the full thing, right? Because now I know they're completely educated on a thing that they need yeah. to know about versus they're only half educated on a thing they know about. But so being able to measure, being able to keep their attention inside with the editing that you're doing and always starting with, again, a, a goal, aspiration or problem that they're facing is going to help with that engagement level and, and watch time, if you will, for your videos. Yeah. So you talk about some editing stuff. And I think, you know, most of the people that we're going to be talking to are not going to be high level professional video creators, but there's definitely a lot of good tools out there. But what kind of tools or, or apps or whatever do you recommend for people to use when they're editing their videos? Yeah, hey, Todd, it's funny because this is one of those places where sometimes I feel like people need to dumb themselves down. Yeah. And let me explain what I mean by that is typically you're going to be like, OK, I, we're going to create video. I need to learn how to create video. And everybody goes to, you know, Final Cut Pro or Premiere. Oh, my God, what a what a hurdle that is to learn those, <laughs> which, by the way, I can edit in those. Sure. But you sometimes, again, less time with less money, sometimes you gotta dumb yourself down. So my favorite editor, to be honest with you, is Camtasia by TechSmith, hmm. because it gives you just enough tools to create something quickly. It gives you kind of the 20 to 30% that you need, plus it gives you things like templates uh, and additional things that you can throw in there, intros, outros, and build out, well, a library, and build hmm. out a template timeline where now when I create a video, I go into Camtasia, I take the raw file that I have, I throw it in the timeline, the intro's already there, the outro's already there, the subscribe to our channel is already there, I go through and I knock out all the dead space, I squeeze it together, and then I talk about that squirrel syndrome where I'll just use scale. Scale this one to 125 mm -hmm. and move it left. Scale this one to 125, move it right. Have this one be centered, this one be centered. Left, right, centered, left, centered, right, right? And yep. so now, you're, it's the same footage, but you're moving it around. You've got things already flying in. You've used a template. You've got a library, and you're making video quicker, and it's more engaging. Yeah. And it's simplified because it's Camtasia versus worrying about, well, I got to color grade this. Right. And I got to make sure the audio panel is set up over here. Yeah. And what what's those 32 keyboard shortcuts in this Premiere yeah. thing? Oh, my gosh. Forget yeah. it. We're not doing video anymore. Yeah. And what you just said that was great is that you take that same footage because, you know, when we think about like, uh, okay, jump in different angles and stuff. Now are people thinking, oh, well, do, that means I have to have two cameras or do I have to record it twice? No, you take you, you, one camera, one shot still, and you just scale it up, 
change it, move it left or right, and exactly like you said, it jumps a little bit, right? And that that's yeah. that's awesome. So, all right, we've got people planning their videos. They're listening to their audience and they're making a list of questions that need to get answered. They're researching on Google to find out what people are searching for. They've got their tripod, their camera or their iPhone. They've got a, a simple light, simple microphone. They're recording. They've got their video edited in Camtasia and they've got some jump cuts moving around. They've got this great video. And now what do they do to get it actually seen? Yeah, well, first of all, give it to your sales team. <laughs> I mean, what's <laughs> funny is that's not the typical response that you'll yeah. get. People will be like, share that junk on social. Get yeah. it out to the world. No, you got a good video. As a marketing department, if I build five, six, seven good videos that I know answer the questions that our customers are going to have, I get them to the sales team. And if I'm really savvy about this, I get them into the sales team's hands using something like a HubSpot template or a HubSpot snippets. And I let them know, look, if your customer has a question about XYZ, ABC, one, two, three, there are templates and snippets by the name of the problem that you're going to be helping them to address in your HubSpot portal. Which by the way, if you're watching this and you're not a HubSpot user, there's other tools that you could use. I'm simply saying in HubSpot, this is how I would do it. Now my sales team is leveraging that content on a daily basis. Boom. Now I move over and I use it on social media. I post it in Facebook. I post it on LinkedIn. If you're not doing LinkedIn video, come on, what's up? <laughs> LinkedIn video. I use it on Twitter. I'm, I'm making a teaser for my Instagram account, wherever, whatever social channels, I'm making it so a piece of it or all of it can be used on that platform. The other thing is I'm making sure that on my website, there's a video gallery where you can have a YouTube experience, but on my domain name. I want you to get lost and spend as much time as you can with me, with my team members, with my company, because this whole thing, by the way, is about brand affinity. I want you to fall in love with me. I want you to fall in love with Todd. I want you to fall in love with Remington Begg or Dan Moyle or Jackie Friend or anybody from our team. And the more that you fall in love with us, spend time in our video gallery on our domain, we become the people you know, like, and trust. Yes, that's like that's, absolutely that's, right. That's where you're trying to get to, right? You want that brand affinity. Yeah. Um, and so that's why you're taking this time to have these communication uh, moments via video and putting them in the sales team, on social, on your website. Those are the three main places that you'll focus on. I love it. So uh, real quick, uh, last thing before I let you go, because we're pushing up on time here, but uh, any recommended resources, books, YouTube channels, blogs, um, you know, social media accounts to follow that give good tips, where should we be checking out for more information? Yeah, definitely. So I'll give a shout out to one of my like favorite dudes on the internet, Nick Nimmin. Uh, his brother, D Nimmin, is awesome if you're doing mobile video as well. So both of those guys are just, I mean, they're troopers. They know what they're doing. Uh, on YouTube, you can go check that out. You can also go over to sprockettalk.com. That's where we live. Yep. It's a lot of HubSpot stuff, but we do some video stuff as well. Heck, we've got a personalized one-to-one -one video course, Todd. It's sprockettalk.com forward slash personal video, one word, that gives you a ton of tips and a bunch of tools you can use to do those things. We've got a 10 hour uh, video marketing course that you can get when you're involved in that as well. And some of those are free just by becoming a monthly VIP plus member. I'm not trying to sell you here. No, I'm just yeah, yeah. Know that those are some of those resources that we have in place as well. Um, yeah. I will and say, I think people can also check this out, not just one, the great content that you're putting out, but also to look at you as an example of what they can be doing. And, and I'm saying that to help promote you and, and to give you as an example, as one of these people to model after. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'm just yeah. a guy trying to do a good job at his work, <laughs> right? Uh, the one last place I will tell you that I've uh, been fascinated with and I, I've loved throughout the years is lynda.com. I know they do a lot of stuff with development and design, but there are some really great video courses that you can get in there. And here's the thing, I'm gonna throw a sideball or a curveball or whatever you wanna call it. <laughs> um, one of the things I will say, if you wanna get better with your video, it's not so much the technical side of video and the cameras and all that. The curveball is that you should be paying a ton of time to story. Story is where it's at, no matter if it's a sales video, a marketing video. Like when you tell a story, people lean in. When you try to sell them stuff, people lean back. You always want to get those humans to lean forward. And so there's also a podcast uh, that Dan Moyle uh, does, and it's about storytelling. And, and if you love podcasts, audio content, look for the Storytellers Network with Dan Moyle. Listen to that. He interviews a ton of people and how they focus on story. And then take those techniques you're learning and implement them in your videos as you build them out.
I love that. That's some great tips. So you already mentioned a little bit, but where can people find out more about you? Yeah, absolutely. On the socials, uh, Twitter and Instagram, at George B. Thomas. If you're more of an old person like me and you're on <laughs> Facebook, Mr. George B. Thomas, uh, you can go to sprockettalk.com or impulsecreative.com. Hit both of those contact us pages. Yeah. Or, believe it or not, believe it or not, Todd, they can email me, George at impulsecreative.com, and get right into my inbox. All right, there we go, guys. Go check out George and all the great stuff he's got going on. And, George, thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. A ton of value here for everybody to get through. Awesome, Todd. It was my pleasure.